What's up guys, I'm DK Wrestler, and in today's video, we're going to be using the Tier Maker website and ranking every Comic-Con exclusive Funko Pop in 2024. This would include C2E2, San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, and even the Fun-Con exclusives that recently released. But I also did sprinkle in a little bit of the cons that don't actually count as cons realistically, and as this specifies, it is just Funko Pops, so no soda no bitty pops no lounge fly none of that just straight up funko Pops. so let's get right to it all righty so we are on the tier maker website and all the categories from worst to best we got ourselves clearance could have been better not bad really good and amazing and like i said at the beginning there is some cons that are like technically cons, but not actually, which is what we're kicking off with, which is Target Con 2024, in which we got ourselves the Stranger Things Black Light Pops of the two pack of Stephen Robin and then the new Eddie, which I'm actually gonna put both of these under could have been better. I think if we were to have gotten a, I guess, con exclusive Stranger Things pop, it would have been better than these. Plus, I feel like the other Blacklight Eddie that was an Entertainment Earth exclusive was better than the one we had here for Target Con, basically mimicking the molding of that OG Eddie Munson. Then we got the Diamond Collection Hello Kitty in Cake Pop. And I'm going to put this under not bad. And I think in a way the Diamond Collection specification actually works with this considering it's cake and you got a little bit of that shine because of the icing. So I kind of dig the reason of using Diamond Collection for that the 10 inch umbreon gonna put this under could have been better the 10 inch sun goku from naruto shippuden gonna put this under really good especially because this is a character we've never actually had in pop form yet the pop comic covers of i believe squirrel girl and i'm gonna put this under not bad really cool and definitely makes sense for a con exclusive the pop and tea bundle for princess leia this is where i believe it's more of that comic book sketching version and I'm gonna put this under not bad. I really like the design of this Princess Leia. This actually appeared at my local GameStop here in Canada and the t-shirt's pretty nice too. So it goes under not bad. The 10 inch ukulele stitch. I feel this is gonna be a could have been better. We could have gotten a different Lilo and stitch pop at least instead of just taking a mold. We've already seen, I believe also in a six inch form now in a 10 inch form. The two pack of Edge and Kane for the WWE lineup. And although I am DK wrestler and I do like my WWE pops I'm putting this under could have been better and that's because this would have been so much better if they were two separate pops or at least if they got the eras right because this cane that we have here was obviously OG cane from when he debuted but it was unmasked cane when Edge and Kane actually feuded then it would have made more sense the flocked Elmo on trike from Sesame Street I'm gonna put this one under really good for the fact that this is flocked but my huge bugaboo about this is just the unnecessary box space for this pop rides where we've seen time and time again through photos that this could easily fit in a four inch box. Hal Jordan from Green Lantern, gonna put this under not bad. It fits with the color theme of Target. The King Kong with the mechanical arm from I believe the Godzilla versus Kong movie. And I'm actually gonna put this under really good because of the detail, but I think what could have made it better is if this figure was flocked. The last Ronin Pop comic covers, I'm gonna put this under not bad, pretty decent idea, but I do like the previews exclusive four inch variant of the last Ronin more than I like what they did with the comic cover. The flock two pack of Shadow and Amy from Sonic the Hedgehog. I am gonna put this under really good for the sake of obviously a flocked Amy, but that's why I think it's not under amazing is that I feel that Amy should have been by herself. And then the last Targacon 2024 exclusive is the Stephen Curry. And I guess I'm gonna put this under, I don't know, not bad because of the jersey color and the fact that it's a posing that I don't think I've ever seen on an NBA pop. The next con is C2E2, the first one where we can actually say it's a con. Starting off with the One Piece pops of the Shanks Wanted poster and the Caesar Clown. The Wanted poster I'll put under not bad, 
but the Caesar Clown I'll actually put under really good just because of the detail that's involved with this specific character. Tony Stark Pop from Marvel I'm also going to put under really good. I really like the way that they executed him either getting out of his suit or him getting into his suit. The two-pack of Woody and Buzz Lightyear for Toy Story, which I am going to put it under really good for the sake of seeing a Comic-Con exclusive Toy Story pop, which we haven't gotten one in quite a while. And believe it or not, this is actually the very first time we've actually got Woody and Buzz in a two-pack besides the minis that came out like at the very beginning of when Funko Pops were made. Poochie from The Simpsons, and this is going to be the first pop, in my opinion, to go under the amazing category. I think this is such an awesome Simpsons pop, and it's so obscure that it makes sense to be a Comic-Con exclusive instead of just another Homer or a Bart or something that just isn't all that exciting. Ho with the dumplings from Kung Fu Panda. I'm gonna put this under not bad. I like the idea that they made this a six inch pop instead of a four inch. The 10 inch Cresselia from Pokemon and I'm going to put this under not bad, even though I don't like the 10 inch Pokemon pops, like I mentioned with the Umbreon, at least this is a Pokemon that has never been transformed into a pop before. And I will mention that with the other Pokemon 10 inch pops that we're gonna talk about later on. I believe this is Madara from Naruto. I'm gonna put this under not bad. And that is gonna be the same case with Miro Togata from My Hero Academia. They're not bad, they're okay. They're not the greatest, but they're not the worst either. Green Lantern, I'm not really a big fan of this one. I'm gonna put this one under, could have been better. I think we could have gotten something different for DC than this. We got Yajirobe, I believe it's pronounced, from Dragon Ball Z. I'm actually going to put this under really good. This is very refreshing for Dragon Ball Z. The Egghead Jr. from Looney Tunes, I'm also going to put under really good. They usually knock it out of the park with the Looney Tunes Comic-Con exclusives. And then the last Comic-Con exclusives for C2E2, we got ourselves the Pilot Freddy, the first Officer Proto, and the first ever Franny Funko Pop. And all of these I'm going to put under really good and I have specific reasons to why they couldn't exceed to amazing. First off with the Franny, I don't think that they should have done the stewardess outfit. I think they should have just done simple, normal Franny Funko as the very first one instead of some sort of occupation. I get it with the theme of Funko Airways, but I think that they could have just pulled off a normal one. The first officer, Proto, I'm a pretty big fan of Proto, but I think this would have been cooler if it was a multi-pack with that Freddy Funko Pop, considering that, of course, it's basically the pilots, I guess. And I think that would be the same reason for Freddy, but I do feel like because we had a singular Proto, that I think with the Freddy, it should have been a pop rides with an airplane. I think it would have been so much better in that aspect. Now we move over to San Diego Comic-Con from this past year, starting off with the Batman Superman fusion. I'm actually gonna put this under really good. There's been a lot of mashups where there've been meh from Funko, but this one actually looks pretty decent and the colors pop out really nicely. The Godzilla, also gonna put under really good. This with the different colors makes up one of the best Godzilla pops we've gotten in the last couple of years, in my opinion. The Beagle Scout Snoopy, I'm gonna put under not bad. I think we've gotten a different version of this exact Snoopy, so it's not entirely anything too new. Papa Smurf, gonna put it under not bad. Then we got ourselves the 001 Vaporizing, gonna put this under, could have been better. Like I mentioned with the TargetCon exclusive Stranger Things Pops, we could have gotten something so much better for this instead of just another 001 slash Henry Creel slash Vecna. The Edna mode from The Incredibles, I'm gonna put this one under not bad. I think this is really cool for the fans that could never obtain that OG Edna pop. And it makes sense for this year marking the 20th anniversary of The Incredibles. So I really like that Incredibles got a Comic-Con exclusive for San Diego Comic-Con. We got Protozoa from Xenon, and I'm gonna put this under not bad, especially being a limited piece count of 4,000 pieces. The Kermit the Frog with the T, going to put this one under not bad also. We got the Beach Zero Pops, and I'm gonna say that for the regular one, it's gonna go under could have been better. The glow in the dark one, however, will go under not bad. I think 
the normal ones could have been better because we really only needed that glow in the dark version and not both versions. The six inch Baymax with bandages, of course, both versions are on the same photo because that's what was posted by Funko. But regardless, I will put both of these under the not bad category. I think both of them look equally pretty good. Then for the Marvel lineup, we got Mr. Sinister and Spider Boy gonna put Mr. Sinister under not bad, but I'm going to put Spider-Boy under really good. I think this is a really cool version of Spider-Man, or I guess some sort of version of Spider-Man that isn't Spider-Man himself. So that's really awesome to see this kind of obscurity for the Marvel lineup. For the Star Wars lineup, we got ourselves the Grand Admiral Thrawn with like that certain hand pose. And then we got the Darth Vader, which for the regular Grand Admiral Thrawn and the Darth Vader, I'm gonna put under not bad, especially Darth Vader actually looking pretty decent decent in person, but whatsoever, we did not need a Diamond Collection Grand Admiral Thrawn. I am debating on putting this under clearance, but it is better than quite a bit of pops we are going to be putting under the clearance category. Then going on a huge stretch of anime pops, we got ourselves the One Piece Scented Sugar, Satoru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen, Shinobu from Demon Slayer, Gara from Naruto, and Elemental Hero Flame Wingman from Yu-Gi-Oh! So with Sugar, I'm going to put under really good, especially with the idea of it being a scented pop. Satoru Gojo, I think originally when doing the worst to best, I we rated this pretty low, but I am going to put under not bad because of the fact that I believe that's actually a head underneath his foot. So that's pretty gruesome for the pop. The Shinobu is not bad, but there definitely was a better version as terms of the Funko Shop exclusive. The Gara, actually, you know what? The Shinobu, uh, I'm going to put under could have been better because I'm also going to put the Gara under could have been better. And the Shinobu isn't as detailed as Gara, which is why I'm also putting it under could have been better. The could have been better reasoning for Gara is the fact that we have a very similar one that released as a Hot Topic exclusive back in the day. So why was there a point of re-releasing it besides maybe a little bit extra detail? I don't know, but I'm just not a fan of the idea of almost re-releasing a pop. Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. I'm actually going to put this under Amazing for the sake of detail and not the fact that I collect a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pops. The 10-inch Arceus from Pokemon. I explained this a bit earlier with the Cresselia. Will go under Not Bad. We got the 6-inch Voltron. This will also go under Not Bad because of the detailing. The Marvin the Martian. I'm actually going to put under Really Good because this actually is the very first time that we have Marvin the Martian singularly instead of the Pop Rides that we got back in the day as a Funko Shop exclusive or the Pops they would have made either in different mashups or in the Space Jam lineup. Elmo with Rocco from Sesame Street. I'm going to put this one under not bad. I think this could have went under really good if this was flocked, just like the Elmo on Trike, but it's still a pretty decent version. The Glow in the Dark Lord Soth from Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to put this one under not bad. Usually when I rank Dungeons and Dragons pops, they actually go under either really good or amazing because of the detail involved, but I think that this might be one of my least favorite pops from DND, but it's still not a bad pop. Then we got Harry Potter doing the expect Patronum spell, I believe it is, from Prisoner of Azkaban. This is going to go under could have been better. There's something that I feel it could have been better with this, especially celebrating what is the 20th anniversary of my favorite Harry Potter movie of all time, Prisoner of Azkaban, the Wednesday moments. And I'm going to put this under not bad. I think this was pretty cool, especially the fact that I believe if you shine a light to it, it does give that color effect as if they were actually behind some sort of mural. The Wicked Witch of the West with the Winged Monkey from Wizard of Oz. This one's going under really good. This is a great example of a pop where you don't have to get the separate ones of Wicked Witch and Winged Monkey. You could buy this pop and even skip out on those to save your money. And I actually like that aspect. Diggum Frog from Honey Smacks. And I am putting this under clearance for the first pop in this category. There is just something about this pop that I just dislike so much, and I think it was so unnecessary. The common one that came out back in the day is so much better with the mouth open and, of course, him holding the spoon. It just makes no sense why they have a Honey Smacks pop here as a ad icons for Comic-Con. I honestly would have rather seen another McNuggets instead of this pop. And then lastly, for San Diego Comic-Con, we have the Mayor Freddy, the Roller Diner Franny, and the Pizzeria Proto. I'm going to put the Freddy under really good. I think they did a great job with this. 
but that Franny and Proto is going under amazing. Easily, in my opinion, still to this day, the best Proto pop that they have ever done. And then the Franny here is a much better pop, in my opinion, than the Stewardess Franny from C2E2. Next up is D23 2024, and I will say straightforward for the most part, this is an abomination of a Comic-Con. The Bob Gurr, however, that pop is actually going to go under really good, especially being limited to 3,000 pieces. Then when it comes to the Bullseye with Captain America shirt, I'm going to put it under not bad because of how the pop looks, but it's the fact that this is a D23 pre-release and that it ended up being released at Target later on, hence why there was the two stickers involved with it. But pretty much with the rest of the pops, uh, okay, with the comic book sketching of Spider-Man and Venom, this is going to go under could have been better because I feel like you could have done one or the other and didn't need to do this two-pack. But now as we get to the last four pops, 100% are these all going under clearance and are so bad. There is no reason why we should have gotten a Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker metallic pop, a Chernabog and Sorcerer Mickey two-pack, and especially in what world does it make sense to have the two different Lucas together and being metallic specification. This is Probably not only the worst Comic-Con exclusive of the year, but probably the worst Comic-Con exclusive of all time, even worse than a lot of those chrome-colored Dragon Ball Z pops. And then with the Flock Stitch pop, that is pretty cool, but at the same time, this was a pop that I believe was announced like three years ago and isn't releasing till now. Next up is the Glow in the Dark My Melody, which is the one and only pop that was released for LA Comic-Con this year, and I'm going to put this under Not Bad. Bad. I actually don't know what the glow looks like with this pop and it also was I believe a shared exclusive to Toy Stop Collectibles, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Next up isn't actually a Comic-Con, but I thought I would throw it in considering that it was a huge highlight of 2024. That is the Hot Topic Scare Fair exclusives, which is, I guess I'm going to compare to like Target Con, where it's almost like a overrated Comic-Con for Hot Topic in this case. But I do got to say for Ghostface and Art the Clown, these are going straight up to amazing. These are some awesome pops. I've mentioned so many times in my reasoning of why I like that ghost face and then the art the clown the detail involved is amazing and i'm not entirely too familiar with texas chainsaw massacre and evil dead but these are really detailed to where this could flip flop between amazing and really good so i am for right now putting it under really good but they are so amazing in terms of detailing now moving over to this year's new york comic-con exclusive starting out with the funko fusion pops which more specifically i'm going to put the Chucky Dilophosaurus and Megan, all of them under the really good category. And then I'm going to put the Skeletor under the not bad category. I know it's kind of getting annoying at this point with the Edified specification, but the detailing of these pops are pretty cool, especially with the overall box art with it also. And I think what saved this from being lower is the fact that all these are limited pieces where two of them are 1000 pieces and two of them are 500 pieces. Britney Spears, gonna put this under could have been better i know certain people may not like that decision but i just feel like we got so many britney spears already this is just kind of pointless the deadpool and zamboni i'm gonna put under not bad i think what could have made this great is not mentioning that 8500 pieces of the limited piece count if they would have made it a lower piece count i think it could have been better then we got ourselves the metallic wolverine gonna put this under not bad although i don't like the fact that they just added a specification to an already existing Funko Pop. It is the fact that this pop is 1000 pieces to why it's even in the not bad category. The Spider Demon Father from Demon Slayer, gonna put this under really good. Such amazing detail involved with this. The One Piece Pops of Corazon and Buggy the Clown, the deluxe pop. Corazon's gonna go under really good, but the not bad category is getting the Buggy the Clown for the sake of, we've already gotten a couple of Buggy the Clowns, but it's that same fact of what I mentioned about even with the Elmo on trike is the unnecessary box space that this could have easily fit in. Not only a four inch box, but if it is a little bit bigger with an insert, it probably could have fit in one of those boxes that like, let's say the gelatinous cube would need to use. We got Meryl Strike from Trigun gonna put this under not bad the mr toad that one's going under could have been better because for the disney representation there definitely were better options to put here 
Animal on drums. Both the normal and flocked versions are going under amazing. These are two phenomenal pops and are a better representation for the Muppets than the Kermit for Comic-Con exclusives. The Kylo Ren, I'm going to put under could have been better. I almost wanted to put it under clearance, especially finding out this wasn't a part of the Dark Side set. This was a part of the Rise of Skywalker set that came out like five years ago but it is the detailing on the pop that make it better than the pops under clearance. Mystical Elf from Yu-Gi-Oh! This is going under amazing. Such a great OG Yu-Gi-Oh! dual monster that I feel a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. We got the pop from Bleach that I'm not even gonna bother trying to pronounce the name. Gonna put it under amazing with the detail involved with this. The Matatabi from Naruto Shippuden. Gonna put it under really good. The 10 inch Dialga, just like I mentioned with the other Comic Con exclusive Pokemon pops, are going under not bad. Debura from Dragon Ball Z, this was really refreshing and I'm putting it under really good. The Metal Knuckles from Sonic the Hedgehog, I am also going to put under really good for the sake of me being a huge fan of Knuckles for Sonic the Hedgehog. The Coraline with Downsing Rod, I'm going to put under could have been better, not because I hate Coraline, but I feel like there's something that could have been better that they could have pulled off for a Comic-Con exclusive. We got the Share Bear as the Witch from Care Bears, and I'm going to put this under not bad. The Witch Hazel, I believe it is from Looney Tunes, almost called it Witchy Poo for some reason. I'm going to put under really good for the sake of Looney Tunes pops usually killing it for Comic Cons. The Batman Who Laughs I'm going to put under not bad. It is a bit more detailed than the original Batman Who Laughs but wasn't really needed at the same time. The Jolly Jacko or Jacko Jolly I don't remember the name uh, from V Friends I'm going to put under not bad. The more I look at this pop, the more it has been growing on me, especially because I remember voting this as the worst exclusive for this year's New York Comic Con. But the more I look at it, the more I see, you know, I'd rather have this than the Britney Spears or the Kylo Ren or any of the New York Comic Con pops that I have under could have been better. The April Ludgate from Parks and Recreation, gonna put this under not bad. I'm liking the Parks and Rec representation for Comic Con. The two pack, or it's not even a two pack, for Wednesday of Wednesday and Enid in the Halloween costumes. Gonna put under not bad, but it would be really good if it was a two pack. I don't know why they did these separate. We got Dream from the Sandman. Gonna put this under not bad for the detail. Lucifer, I think it's going under really good. And the last New York Comic Con exclusive being the Headless Freddy Funko. I feel like we all agree it's gotta go under amazing. It is such a detailed pop and definitely fits the Halloween theme that New York Comic Con was so close to. And then last but not least, we have the five exclusives from the recently released Button Con London 2024 exclusives, in which we got ourselves the 10 inch Palkia from Pokemon, Paddington with Sandwich from, of course, Paddington, the Hagen Zuka, I believe it is, from Demon Slayer, the character whose name I can't remember from One Piece, and then Homer with Reactor from The Simpsons. Palkia, just like the other exclusives, is going to go under the not bad category. The Paddington, I'm also going to put under a not bad, but why didn't they make this flocked or else it would go under really good? The Demon Slayer pop, I'm also going to put under not bad, even though we do have a different version of this character already. This One Piece pop, however, there's just something about it. I'm going to put under not bad, but there's something about it where it just doesn't give me the feeling like the other One Piece Comic Con exclusives do. And then Homer with Reactor, I am going to put it under really good, actually, even though this does seem like a basic pop but it is the fact of that Easter egg that you can find if you take this pop out of the box that makes it, in my opinion, a really good Homer Simpson pop. Anyways, guys, that is gonna be the end of this video. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below on if you agree or disagree on my tier maker list. And I hope to see you guys on another video here on the channel. One, two, three, I'm out of here.